Now let's continue with this crusade against these worthless scavenger mutts and their troubled owners. Let's deal with the gullibility of dog lovers who insist that their dogs love them. Many of you may have heard a popular trend of theirs that's going around where they refer to oxytocin, which is a hormone that they refer to as a love hormone. This article reads, your dog loves looking deeply into your eyes while you smile just as much as you love your pup's sweet doggy grin. <laughs> it's clearly a mutual admiration between the two of you, but it's also a science. Every time you lovingly gaze into your canine's eyes, its levels of oxytocin, the hormone associated with love, attachment, and trust rises, as does your own. But scientists knew that part already. Recently, researchers have discovered that dogs love seeing humans smile so much that they may even ignore the presence of danger in lieu of a view of our pearly whites." End quote. Now, of course, this is exactly the type of propaganda the dog lovers would run with without questioning the validity of it in their attempt to substantiate the value of these food-obsessed scavengers' existence. The truth is that this nonsense does not hold up well to scrutiny at all. The effects of this centrally released oxytocin are not as clearly understood. Some research suggests it is involved with trust, empathy, and social bonding. These findings have caused some to call oxytocin the trust hormone, the love hormone, or even the cuddle hormone. Others have argued, however, that oxytocin's effects on the brain are not so clear-cut. Some researchers have found oxytocin to be associated with negative emotions and aggression, and some of the research supporting oxytocin's function as a love or trust hormone has been criticized for methodological problems. Other researchers have hypothesized that oxytocin might be involved in promoting responsiveness to social cues in general, whether they be positive or negative. Not only have people manipulated the role of this hormone to draw attention, from mutt lovers, you know, to draw traffic to their websites and so forth. But as you heard in that clip, oxytocin might be involved in promoting responsiveness to social cues. I would argue that the mere presence of a dog owner raises the level of oxytocin in dogs that its presence alone is a social cue in the dog's mind. Why? Because dogs associate their masters with one thing, food. Always keep in mind that we are dealing with a scavenger with a never-ending appetite. The Discovery Magazine has a piece in their blog that reads, Describing oxytocin as the hormone of love is like describing a computer as a writing tool. It does other things too, some of which aren't pleasant. Oxytocin is a versatile actor whose resume includes all sorts of jobs in sex, reproduction, social behavior, and emotions. It can increase trust among people and make them more cooperative. It can increase the social skills of autistic people. It's released during orgasm. It affects lactating breasts, contracting wounds, and the behavior of sheep mothers towards their newly born lambs. The list goes on. Drug addiction, generosity, depression, empathy, learning, memory. Despite these many roles, oxytocin is often reduced to a misleading label. While hormone of love may be great for catchy headlines and compelling marketing slogans, they are ultimately misleading." End quote. So once you research the role of this hormone, 
you realize that it has been used to mislead mutt lovers and to increase traffic to their websites, to their articles, YouTube videos, and so forth. Seeing that the dog does not understand human language, dogs are forced to associate their masters with one thing, food. That's the only language they understand. They are totally unaware of your character or personality. So they have no reason to bond with you as a person. Food has to be the bonding factor. This becomes even more obvious when you consider the well-known fact that in the presence of dogs, you are advised by experts not to look into the dog's eye. Why? Because dogs take it as a sign of hostility, as a challenge. In other words, food has to be the bonding factor. In order for dogs to become attached to humans, in order for them to look into your eyes and have its levels of oxytocin increase. That's why they use the dog's master in the experiment, all the experiments, and not some stranger. What role does oxytocin play when dogs look into their master's faces right before they decide to eat their faces after their masters die inside the home alone with them? As I reported in a previous video, I will leave the link to those stories in the description box again. If this oxytocin theory were true, dogs would not be able to do that. Because once their masters die, fall to the ground, and their dog look at their master's face, they would fall in love. If this theory were true, right, they would see their beloved master's face and feel their own oxytocin level rise and yearn for hugs and kisses from their masters. That's not what happened. Instead, what happens, those dogs look into their master's face and they see a warm, tasty meal. They realize that you are dead and that now you are a tasty, warm meal. How could they do this if they look into your face and they feel love from oxytocin? More stupid, deranged, mutt lover propaganda is all it is. And that is why the dog's oxytocin level increases. I wish they could test those dog's level of oxytocin right before those dogs decide to eat their master's face. I bet you anything it is increased because it only increases in the anticipation of food, right? They know they are about to eat. If you're alive, they anticipate food and their oxytocin levels increase. And I'm positive once you die and dog realizes that it now has a warm bloody meal, its levels of oxytocin will increase. And several times this has happened even when the dogs have access to dog food. Reality, once again, does not confirm this mutt lover propaganda. It does not confirm this oxytocin mutt love theory. As I explained before, every time dog lovers believe their dog is showing them affection, the dog is actually anticipating food and begging for food. When the dog sees them, gets excited, wags its tail, runs up to them, jumps on them, crawls on them, you know, moving around, acting all hyperactive, right? So when they do this to anybody, not only as master, they're actually begging for food. They are looking for something to eat. They are anticipating food. They are scavengers that have a never-ending appetite. The insult to human intelligence increases. The more humans interpret this 
anticipation and begging for food as love and affection. Are we not more intelligent than this? Again, dogs do not love. They don't care how much oxytocin you find in their urine. Notice, again, how the study did not examine the level of oxytocin in dogs when those dogs were looking into the eyes of a stranger. They only did it with their master, the provider of what the dog loves most, food, of what they are thinking about 24-7, food. There's an article written on People.com about how researchers have discovered that dogs love seeing humans smile so much that they ignore the presence of danger in lieu of a view of our pearly whites that I mentioned early at the beginning of this video. Doesn't that information sound familiar? In the video titled Dogs are obsessed with food. I went over this. There's a link in the description box to a research article that reads, if a dog is presented with food before he reaches a high stress level in the presence of a stimulus that scares him, a positive emotional response occurs. I covered that in that video and that explains exactly what they wrote in people.com that dogs will ignore the presence of danger, right? That they can be in the presence of a stimulus that scares them. As this article reads, and they'll ignore the danger if you were to place food inside a room as well. So you clearly see how people manipulate these gullible dog lovers by concealing information about the dog's nature. The dog associates its master with food. It sees the master giving it attention and starts to anticipate what it is thinking about, food, what it is obsessed with, food, eating. As a result, you get the same behavior you would get if it actually had food. The same result is the dog will ignore danger. Right? And in this article, they failed to tell you that the dog ignores danger because it associates its master with food. They want you to think it's simply in love with you just because it loves you. This should be common sense. It is sad, really pathetic, that this has to be explained to so-called evolved humans. They are filthy, disgusting scavengers that are designed by nature to act as carcass vacuum cleaners. That's why they always have their noses buried on the ground, buried all over the place, sniffing everything nonstop. They are looking for something to eat. That is exactly why as soon as you turn your back, your dog will eat your food. That's why it sneaks into the kitchen and steals food. You had no idea the dog was even paying attention to your food. You respond to your scavenger's excitement when it sees you. You see its hyperactive behavior and you actually tell yourself that it behaves like this because it loves you. You're that desperate to feel special and loved. When in reality, its excitement stems from its anticipation of food. Many of you have therapy dogs who you think actually cares about you because whenever you have an anxiety attack or you appear depressed, the dogs come over to you and give you attention, right? They lay on you or put their paw on you. When in reality, the dog was trained to look for those signals and respond to those signals by using food, right? They offer the dog treats after it does certain things, right? You put your head down, you rub your nose, you cry, it comes up, then it gets a treat. Every time you think that worthless scavenger is showing you affection, whenever you look depressed, that mutt is actually anticipating food. This 
training goes on for several weeks, a person will do something that a depressed person does and it is seen by the dog as a signal. Come get some food. Hungry scavenger mutts. It is extremely pathetic how people project these scavengers' obsession with food as concern and love. They talk about how dogs can reduce stress and have a positive emotional effect on humans, but they fail to mention that it's only made possible if those humans interpret the dog's obsessive food behavior as affection. It's only made possible if you think that mutt is thinking about anything other than food. They give dogs treats for laying its head on you, putting its paw on you, and doing everything else it's been trained to do for a doggy treat. Doesn't matter if it's a therapy dog or a family dog. Everything dogs do is for food. In order to train dogs to do anything, you use food. The only language humans can speak the dogs understand is the language of food, offering them food. So much to the chagrin of these scavenger lovers, those scavengers do not love you. They love food, nothing else. You can run this oxytocin nonsense on the average Joe. You will not run it on the Crusaders. For those unaware of this information, Prior to listening to this video, I invite you to use this information as ammunition to debunk yet another misguided and flawed mutt lover talking point.